Sound Studios is in your ears. Okay, so I've gotten just so many people asking, you know, how did you convert your space into your studio? So, I mean, these aren't the best pictures in the world. Um, you know, obviously, when you're building, you know, nothing obviously seems as important as the actual project. So, uh, this is the best pictures I have. Um, at least I save them. So, when we this was uh, this was actually the very first day. So, this is this is my dad here. Um, and the studio is actually a two car garage, but there's a lot more space. It's kind of a tandem garage too, because there's a lot of extra space behind there. You could almost fit almost two cars deep, um, just in the control room alone. So, uh, yeah, this is a, probably the last time these garage doors were open. Now they are totally bolted shut. Um, so we go to this one. This is some of the original. This is the this is the original garage. So um, as you can see, how far back this goes. This is uh, 26 feet all the way back. Um, and as you can see, the the garage door openers and uh, this beam is actually the one that holds uh, a lot of the lighting over the top of the studio. Uh, up at the very top there, that is 14 and a half feet uh, tall. So it's a a good space for a studio. Um, this is kind of after we started wrecking things and you know making a mess. <laughs> uh, this is tearing down all the all the original stuff, all the wiring. Um, and this is actually the back corner. We built a wall along here that you'll see later on. But this is the this is directly behind the console. This is where, if you guys ever seen any of the other videos, this is where the big three foot base trap is is uh, is over here. So this is the wall actually where the door entrance is. The door is somewhere around here. Um, and then we built the angled wall over here and the console would essentially be right over here. And as you can see, uh, this is the, the beginning. This is where I cut the hole right through the side of the garage for the main entrance door. Um, I reinforced this with extra two by fours um, and then put like a top plate over the top of it just to make it, you know, don't want to destroy or ruin the integrity of what, you know, the garage already was built um, built as. And then that is the door installed. It is a steel triple insulated door. Uh, triple insulated meaning it's essentially almost two doors thick. So uh, the very first thing we did was frame out the floor because the floor actually pitches down this way. Sorry, this picture is a little kind of crooked. Um, so these are two by fours and then to fill in the gaps, we actually put more two by fours on both sides of it just to make it really strong. So it's almost like three two by fours. Now we could have done two by sixes, but we had to cut a lot. So this kind of just really worked out good with the the height um, and then didn't what I forgot to take a picture of and we kind of forgot is we didn't put the moisture barrier down so we actually had to um, pull up <laughs> a lot of this flooring to put the moisture barrier down this is just a dry fit of three quarter inch um, MDF chipboard whatever you want to call it for the flooring just for the subfloor at least uh, this is where um, the, as you can see over here is the garage doors. So we had a frame, essentially a, a false wall, a floating wall is actually what it truly is because essentially this is a room inside of a room. Eventually we'll get there. Um, I'll show you some of it. I don't have pictures of everything, but so moving on, uh, as you can see, this is, this is how we kind of made the floating, the floating wall here. As you can see, these do not actually touch the outside structure of the ceiling because you want to create this room inside of a room and that's how you essentially isolate yourself um, and the sound from sound from getting out and other sound from coming in and the windows we spray painted them black this is only one of the coats um, it did get better looking <laughs> so we got the whole floor done and this is the wall so this is where the console actually is the console would be out here and then inside this small little room is just storage it's the place where all the gear gets stored the stands the mics all that stuff and uh, as you can see we have one wall and a second wall so it's a it's a room with inside of a room again yeah so moving on this is the this is the ceiling of it um, because this is called a hip roof the garage is built with a hip roof um, there's a lot of weird angles great for recording because uh, it's not uh, a box it's not a square 
walled box so putting this room this wall on somewhat of a 45 degree kind of made this nice um, this window actually was put in and then we took it out because I didn't want glass it leaked way too much sound um, here's another picture of it kind of getting done uh, once again this door right here is another one of those double thick doors this one we took two solid core doors glued them together and then screwed them together and then actually green glue in between the two doors to kind of almost uh, make the doors act, act like a room inside of a room. So moving on, uh, this is another shot of the double thick door. Um, this kind of like weird entrance way, but it was the only way to get um, into the live room, the vocal booth. So moving on, um, these are the walls all stripped down now with the floor totally done. Uh, these walls um, from the outside in is half inch plywood. It has like the grooves in it. And then there's half inch chipboard um, and then we have one inch foam core board. Now this foam core is old. It is a, it's not original with the garage, but that's actually what you see here. And then we have a traditional three and a half inch stud. And eventually all that will be filled in with spray foam and acoustic insulation. So we move on to the next one. Uh, there was actually a window here. We boarded the window up, knocked out the glass, filled it all in with a whole bunch of um, mainly, mainly plywood. But uh, once again, this is the back corner to give you a reference. This is where the big bass trap is. So totally um, 180 behind this where the console would be. Um, so this is the first round of spray foam. I spray foamed every single joint where anything met, any two materials came together. It got spray foam. Um, as you can see, is another full wall. Spray foamed every joint, including the ceiling. Um, I redid the ventilation afterwards. It is fully vented and breathable. So I did miss all of these shots when we essentially put up the studs in the drywall um, to make the room inside of a room. But this is the next closest photos that I have of this. Um, and in this case here, we are starting to um, put in the insulation um, which runs around the entire studio and this is essentially acoustic panels um, Some of these gaps some of these walls are six inches some are three and a half And it really just kind of depended on what and where but this is the you know essentially the part part of the process of adding all this um, fiberglass insulation on the walls. The white is a different density than the yellow stuff is. And this is essentially all of it um, put up on one main wall. As you can see, we also have the foil insulation in, which ended up being our permanent roof. So this is actually two inch uh, foam insulation. Uh, open cell, I believe it is. One side has foil on it. The other side is a moisture barrier worked pretty good uh, it does leak some heat I mean it's not the best thing we had intention we had intentions of going back and drywalling it but it just never happened um, so yeah so you can see all the different uh, we got the different density insulation down here and then all the rest of the fiberglass here and this runs around the entire studio too and as you can see this is the wall where the actually the mixing console would be right over here this is the window that eventually got filled in, our double thick door going into the live room. And this is the full ceiling done. So this is all of the two inch insulation board, which makes up our entire ceiling all sealed together. Here's the window I talked about that eventually got taken out, but we are actually inside of the storage room on this. Um, and as you can see, now we have I've decided to um, take the windows out and fully drywall this entire wall both sides insulated in between it and then these are actually where the dyne audio speakers sit my main speakers i made these boxes to to recess the speakers into so this obviously is from the other side of the wall and just to help cut down with the uh, cabinet residents and this is a better shot so now we are looking inside of the control room these are the boxes it's all three quarter inch plywood covered in drywall acoustic sealant on every joint and every screw. Uh, this is the other side of the wall. Um, this is where actually the huge TV computer monitor is for the studio. As you can see, we have insulation all over this and then also this will be also insulated. This is the console here, obviously. I uh, got the old KRK speakers here, the dual monitors. 
Eventually, obviously, they got changed over, but this is just a front look at it. The garage was actually uh, almost connected by this shed. It's about a foot and a half gap in between here. So this is actually the part of the live room, the vocal booth. So we started, as you can see, it's a pretty terrible cutting job, but we started cutting holes between both of them. Got some temporary, um, I guess you would call it, supports going on. It's just two by fours, just temporarily. Everything did get replaced with two by sixes. As you can see, this is actually straight outside, and this is our foot and a half gap in between the two structures. Um, this is during the day, as you can see, we just did some temporary bridging over this. Um, but this is kind of cutting things, you know, to make it look nicer now and find some levelness between these two structures. And so now I've officially started framing these two structures together. We got them all leveled, um, put extra plywood down actually in the vocal booth. We just put up temporary walls just for the meantime. It was, it was kind of cold when we did this uh, construction. So just to keep some of the rain out, the, you know, the bugs and stuff. Um, so now we put in the permanent um supporting of you know where we cut all those two by fours off to join both of the structures together we got two by we actually these are two by eights two by fours i believe there's four two by fours eventually in the end per side per structure just to take the weight which is still overkill for this small of a structure but just you know we had the room so we did it uh just another shot of that as you can see, all the spray foaming has now gone together just to make sure that we have, um, you know, acoustically sealed everything. And now we have the very bottom and I took some concrete chunks and eventually, you know, to make sure that no water gets in here, animals, uh, apparently the previous owner had skunks <laughs> living underneath the live, what is now the live room. Um, as you can see, all the concrete is now in, and another bag of concrete actually went in. And a moisture barrier, and then we have foam core board, once again with the moisture barrier on the one side, and then the aluminum on the other. And now I'm permanently sealing this all together with more spray foam around all the joints, and some plywood. And actually the underside of the plywood was painted with a primer, just to resist any more moisture or mold that might happen. As you can see, this is fully sealed up. And then this actually, this tiny little area over here is actually where the air conditioner unit is gonna be. And I'll show you uh, shots of that soon. So now we're back in the control room. This is my first control desk. Um, this is this is old. Uh, this is before the Allen Heath came along, but this is the only shots I have of the fabric that went up over the top of the insulation just to kind of make it look you know, much better. And uh, this is the original gear that was built in the studio. This is the first gear that I had in this particular studio. Uh, this is the, once again, the first control room setup. Um, you look through these windows here, eventually that was taken down, but this didn't last long, but I just figured I'd group all these pictures together for you. So you can at least see, you know, kind of what this looked like. <laughs> 